Hey there, welcome to the Marketing Happy Hour podcast, where each week we're learning career-defining advice, powerful social media strategies, unique creative tips, groundbreaking influencer marketing tactics, and more from marketing experts that represent some of the world's leading brands. Let's dive in, grab a drink, and join your hosts, Cassie and Erica, for this week's episode. Hey, thanks for tuning in. This week, Cassie and I sit down with Macy Miller, owner and designer at Be Bold Design Studio, a branding and website design studio based in Orlando, Florida. Macy has designed amazing brands and websites for coaches, content creators, boutiques, photographers, interior designers, travel agencies, public speakers, and more. We touch on both branding and website optimization in this episode, and Macy spills the beans on the best practices to consider when starting your website from scratch, how to rank higher on Google, what to do if your website has gone quote unquote stale, her preferred website builders for any business or brand, how to optimize your SEO, and a crucial tip to ensure that that optimization is recognized by search engines. Seriously, pass this episode along to anyone who has a website because they're going to want to hear this. I'll go ahead and stop gushing over all the incredible tips you're about to hear so that I can give the floor to Macy. So make sure you have a glass of your favorite beverage and listen in to this week's episode. Hey, Macy, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much for coming on the show and chatting with us about all things website and SEO best practices. I know this is our first kind of real dive into these topics. So we're so excited to have you on to kind of shed light on those areas. But before we jump in, I do have a very important question that we ask all of our guests on the podcast because it is marketing happy hour. What is in your glass tonight? Well, right now it is water because I am pregnant, but it would usually be a nice light glass of white wine. Love Love that. that. And congratulations, by the way, super excited (laughs) for you. (laughs) Yeah. So exciting. We also over here are drinking water because we are recording this in the middle of the day. Yes. So <laughs> can't really <laughs> indulge yet, but we do have a dinner plans later on. So we will be going and indulging in some wine later um, with one of our past marketing happy hour guests, actually. So that'll be really fun. Um, well, Macy, I've been following along with you for a while on social media, and I'm just really excited to hear more from you and how you developed Beeble Design Studio, what uh, you do and the clients that you have. Um, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I created Beeble Design Studio about four years ago. Actually, yeah, I think it was exactly four years ago in March of, um, when I was working actually as a marketing director at a local hospitality tech company. And so I was designing websites for friends on the side and doing logos and like it was kind of like my five to nine and I loved it. Like I was working on Saturdays, like I was nonstop working, but I just realized I, I really loved that design. Um, and so I realized I do love the analytical strategic part of marketing, but I was just so much more passionate about creating something from scratch or taking something that somebody had already and building off of that. So I took the leap and I started Beeble Design Studio, left the marketing job. And now I have worked with over 120 entrepreneurs, um, mostly female. And I specialize in creating websites for blogs, content creators. Um, That's kind of my niche, but I do everything. Like I just worked on a cat veterinarian clinic, (laughs) which was really cute. I saw a bunch of photos of cats and videos and kittens. Um, I strategize brands, design logos, create websites. Every, Every day is different and I love it. That's incredible. I know you and Cassie have worked together before as well on yeah. some clients. Yeah. So that's awesome to hear what you what you're up to. Yes, yes. And you did an amazing job. And so it was wonderful collaborating with you. But I would I'm really curious with when a client does approach you, um, what's kind of that first step that you take in terms of let's just say they have never had a website before. They mm-hmm. need some insights in terms of best practices for user experience, content 
structure in general, what are some kind of best practices that you share with most people who it's either their first time or they just need a website refresh overall? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, this is, uh, this answer is hopefully keeping in mind that they know what their business is. They have their services already outlined and they know who they provide for. They have a niche. And, um, and so like you probably heard me earlier, I said, I mostly serve content creators and bloggers. And that's just because I've specialized in that certain type of website design. So that's my niche. So um, if they have that all boiled down and they're ready, like they're in front of the computer about to start a website and they're like clicking on like GoDaddy, like not sure what a domain name is. Um, my best tips uh, and best practices would be two different things. Um, if you can get these two things, then you're kind of in the ballpark. Um, one would be a clear above the fold. So that is like, I call it the hero section, the above the fold. It's like when you first open up a website before you scroll down any further, like what is at that top section of the website? Um, because that is the first impression. And honestly, it used to be like seven seconds is what like the experts said that you have to capture attention. I think it's much less. I think it's more down to five seconds. And it's, I don't know if I can get any less attention than that. Um, but within that space, it's so important to one, have a logo and have it be clear and big and readable. Um, you can't imagine how many like websites I've seen that I can't even like read the business name, um, but having a, a clear logo, um, a clean and easy to use navigation. So home, about, um, services, contact. So no like connect with me, like don't get creative at the top. Like people are coming on your website and like they need to like get to where they need to get like quick. And then um, right underneath that, or, you know, in whatever creative way you design or your website designer does um, a photo, a video, a graphical element, just something that captures attention um, paired with a really strong mission statement um, that clearly identifies the solution you provide for your ideal client and why you're the that best solution provider. Um, just because you know they can't quite understand what your name is, what you provide and everything, they're gonna click on another tab out of the 20 other tabs that they have. And that could be another competitor. Mm -hmm. um, and then number two, I would say, as you're thinking about your website content, um, try to view your website, not as like somebody who's in your experience or in your industry and super experienced, but as somebody who has like no idea you know, if you think about a bride and you're a wedding photographer, a bride who has just gotten engaged and this is like, she's never been married before. And it's like, she's going to land on a website and she's not going to really know about lenses and filters and stuff like that. So um, try and think about your brand as, you know, and see, see it through somebody who is seeing your brand for the first time and walk through that journey. And then they're going to ask questions um, so they're going to ask like, what service or product do you provide? Like, are you any good? AKA reviews. Are you credible? Like what's your experience certifications? Like, can I see your work? And, um, so you want to answer as many of those questions as possible and make it easy for your potential client to find those answers. So they aren't left jumping from tab to tab to tab and going to, you know, the next tab, AKA your competitor. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So that that's great. I love those tips for that front page, that first uh, above the fold, um, you know, section and everything. I just want to know a little bit, like, what's the process of working with you? Like, let's say marketing happy hour wanted to dive in the world of websites and, and do one. What, where do we start? Yeah, absolutely. So it depends. Um, I do brands and I do websites. And so, um, but I work with websites who already have brands established. And so usually whether, whether or not we're creating a new brand or um, taking a brand that you have and like expanding that, we start with strategy. And so I have you answer a questionnaire and kind of just get a little bit deeper into your head and talk a little bit um, about what you want your business to be and what you want it to be in five years um, from now. Like, how do you see it growing and scaling? Um, and then we develop a, a strategy proposal where we go into specifically for website, like what the site map is going to be, what is it going to look and feel like, you know, down to like the fonts and colors and stuff like that. 
after we've established that and and um, have a clear outline of making sure that you are unique in your industry and forward thinking in your industry, we take that and we run, we develop the website. <laughs> and so I try and make it as easy as possible for my client. Um, you know, we take it one page at a time just to make sure each page gets, you know, the love and attention that it deserves. Um, every single page, you know, needs to have a purpose on your website. Like don't just have pages that are just like, willy nilly. Um, so we try to make sure every page has, you know, a call to action, um, a clear goal, um, and just really serves your business. That is awesome. And switching gears just a little bit, we know that brands are always looking to get their website to rank a little higher on search results. What are some of your best tips around ranking? Yeah, I know this is like Cassie's <laughs> domain a little bit because she like can pump out blogs like nobody yeah. did this. Um, but really, I mean, it's going to drive, I, hopefully it doesn't like make people think it's cliche, but content, content, content. Honestly, like if you have, you know, say you launched your website and you've got, you know, you've got the bare bones up, like it's good, she's beautiful. Um, but really one easy way to start ranking is to add a blog to your website. Um, and within a few months, if you want to rank, uh, you're not going to rank within a month or two. It's, it's, um, it takes a long time to, um, get into the favorable eyes of Google. <laughs> um, but if you want to get, you know, good results within six months, you know, blogging at least one to two times a week for six months, um, I've noticed really, really strong results, um, and oh, what else? I like to always create like a bank of blog post ideas um, that are specific to the questions that my clients or potential clients ask me on the phone before they even book with me. Um, that is, I feel like the easiest way to get started with blogging because a lot of times like my clients are like, well, what do I blog about? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so really if you can just take five um, five questions that you get asked all the time when you're out and about, um, or when you're on a phone call with a potential client, um, that is a great place to start because number one, those potential clients are Googling those questions, trying to find out the answers themselves. Um, and then two, you're seeing a lot more credible and transparent and open because you're answering these questions and you're being upfront about it. Yeah, absolutely. I do have one follow-up question. If somebody has a website, just speaking from personal experience, I had a blog for a while or a, I don't even know if you would call it a blog, but anyway, um, if a website has kind of gone stale, what would be a good way to kind of pick it back up is, do you have to kind of, you know, start all over or can you just dive into blog creation and do those one to two posts a week for, um, however long and it'll, it'll help. That's a great question because honestly, that's kind of, you know, what I'm facing in my business as well. I, you know, I, I did really well with like the blogging and, and got a lot of traction and, you know, it's faltered, but really it's just picking it back up and, and running with it um, and just being consistent um, and making sure that the blog posts that you do post are valuable. So if you don't have time to post one a week, be honest with yourself. Can you post one blog that is a thousand words? once a month. Um, really those quality pieces that provide a lot of value to your potential clients and that are going to get those clicks is the most important because it doesn't matter if a blog is three years old, it's going to get traction on Google. Like I still get organic traffic from blog posts I did four years ago when I was first starting Be Bold. You know, a lot of them, um, a lot of questions I had asked about were like, what is, um, what should I do about my brand photos? Because photos and photography is such a big part of website design. Um, and so I created an entire guide for potential clients on like, how do you set up a brand photo shoot for your business? And that is one of the best tracking um, blog posts that I have. It's probably in the top five of um, organic traffic for me. And so really, if you haven't, you know, blogged in a while, don't stress, you know, just, just kind of get get a good bunch of blog posts um, up there and then get on a consist consistent schedule. Awesome. And so you talked a lot about kind of that front end SEO. So blogging is really important for SEO. Um, mm -hmm. Macy, you and I work together on copy for a client website. So just having different keywords kind of sprinkled out throughout there, but 
if there's someone who is new to the web design space or a small business owner who's tackling the web design project on their own, if they have a smaller budget, mm -hmm. what are some SEO items for the back end of the website that they should be aware of? That's um, you know, something that they can handle on their own. I know some of those things get super, super technical, but what are a few things that people should be aware of and uh, just make sure they're optimized on the back end? Yeah, absolutely. I know SEO is super tricky and it's like, some people are like, what does the SEO even stand for? And, um, and it can be really, really overwhelming, but um, really I just, you know, would hopefully one offer encouragement to just, you know, take it one step at a time um, and, and build upon it. It is, it is a marathon. You aren't going to become like super successful at SEO overnight. Um, but if you want to get close, um, you can uh, one install Yoast SEO. If you have WordPress um, about half of the world's websites are on WordPress. So um, if you have it, you need Yoast. It is a search engine optimization plugin that actually coaches you on how to enhance every single blog post that you write or page if your website's built on WordPress um, to ensure that the SEO is strengthened. Um, and then number two, the next tip I would have um, that is hopefully easy is, you know, when you upload images on your website, on your blog post, keep in mind that images are now searchable. Um, and so with all of your images, start loading them up with keywords um, and you can label them with the keywords that you want to gain traction with in the alt tags and in the titles of your images. And so instead of just putting an image on your blog post that is photo one, try thinking of it as, you know, if we're keeping with like a photography theme, like Marie photography, you know, Orlando intimate wedding photographer, golf course wedding one, you know, that is so much more descriptive and that will start to gain traction on, as well on, um, on Google Images. Um, and then lastly, once you've optimized your website, a lot of people don't do this and it's kind of like just a little extra step that is so simple, um, but it's to submit your sitemap, your new sitemap to Google so that Google knows how to crawl uh, your site effectively. Um, and so you can usually find a sitemap by adding it to your URL. So if it's like bebledesign.com slash forward slash sitemap.xml is the URL and I can give that to you. So then you, know, you can see everybody's sitemaps <laughs> on the internet. Um, but then you go to Google search console, submit it. And so if like you get a new website or say you get a brand new website design or you add a bunch of blog posts, it's super helpful just to go and give them that fresh sitemap so that they know how to crawl your site effectively. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. So one more follow-up to kind of touching back on what we talked about earlier about some of the best practices. What are some things when you personally are, are going online and kind of going across people's websites, what are some of the most common problems or kind of mistakes that people are making for their web design, their copy, kind of all the different elements of those? Okay. So I would say it is actually websites speed. Um, a lot of times, just like I said, you know, it takes five to seven seconds to capture somebody's attention. If your website's not even loaded within there in that time, um, then again, you, they're, they're exiting out of your tab because they can't get those answers fast enough. Um, and so one way that you can make sure that your site speed is just manageable is by going, if you Google, um, Google site speed, you can click, they have like this generator that you pop in your URL and you can actually see how your site, how fast your site is. They rank your site from zero to a hundred. Um, and then they give you tips and they tell you exactly why your site is not loading fast. So I use that all the time with all of my websites just to make sure that, you know, Sometimes, you know, we load up images, we download them from a stock website, and then we just throw them up there. Those images are huge. They're 5,000 pixels wide, at least. And so if you can shrink those images, compress them, rename them, and just make that a part of your routine, you can make sure that images aren't slowing down your site speed. Um, and then as well, Google can kind of give you a little bit more tips as to why it is loading slowly and what you can do to optimize that on both mobile and desktop. 
That is awesome. That's a really good tip I didn't even know about. So <laughs> good to know. Um, we talked a little bit about optimization with SEO and website speed and things like that. Um, how would you recommend someone write their web copy in a way that's most optimized or most compelling for um, whoever's visiting their website to really understand what they offer, who they are, and why they why the potential customer should choose them. Um, and then are there certain elements that you always recommend having for an, a successful website in terms of copy? Yeah, copy. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is like really Cassie's domain. So I'm afraid <laughs> to like, <laughs> like speak my answer, but you know, she mentioned earlier a lot about keywords and stuff like that. And, and that's always important. Um, I think from from my unique perspective and just working with so many different businesses and, and creating dozens and dozens of websites, um, if you think about when you go and you're searching for a potential provider or service provider, like, oh my gosh, I was trying to find someone to like, you know, get my brows waxed, you know, or, or like um, you're trying to find somebody, you know, a hairstylist. Um, really, it's like, I think in your copy, establishing what makes you unique and how you run your business um, and what values you run your business with. Um, and establishing that is, is a really different way on top of, you know, making sure you have the keyword rich copy um, in a meaningful way can make all the difference in, in guiding your visitors into knowing more about who you are as a service provider and making those meaningful connections with them so that they're not just hiring you for a service or not, you know, I'm not going to just, you know, go and get my eyebrows waxed or eyelashes lifted from somebody, you know, I made those connections with her because she was faith-based and she was local and, you know, she had last minute appointments and, you know, there's those different things that make you unique and so maybe your business values more of a, a communication focused process, or um, maybe you value collaboration or being timely or your, your 10 year seasoned in the industry. Um, when you share what you value and those, those differentiating factors, your audience is going to better understand what sets you apart. And hopefully that'll give you that edge that you need for them to, to make that uh, call or submit that contact form. Yeah. 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 Completely agree. I know a big topic right now with the world of marketing is transparency. And like you said, kind of sharing those values, sharing who you are, kind of those nitty gritty details of your story. I know Macy with the client we collaborated on a big piece was telling a story, telling a story about what he went through and how that basically makes him um, eligible to share what he's sharing to his audiences. Uh, that's mm -hmm. huge. Cause it kind of gives people that aha moment to say, Oh, like he gets it. He understands I can relate with what he went through. And now he can kind of share pieces of his story that can help impact me in my life. So I think that's definitely a huge piece for copy. And just in general, when you're talking to people about your business and just everything, so it can kind of trickle down everywhere. Yeah. 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 So kind of going into the career side of things, uh, do you have any tips for someone who is interested in web design? Again, whether they want to be a full-time web designer, do it on the side, or if they're a small business owner looking to just build their website themselves, what are some tips that you would give them or resources uh, that you would point them to for getting versed in web design? Ooh, I mean, really practice makes perfect, um, but um, for the back end of, of website stuff, Yoast SEO, I've learned a lot about SEO through that plugin, as we mentioned earlier, um, and then really just getting your hands, you know, dirty. If you want to become a website design designer, you got to just start creating websites, and so, you know, I think for me, something that was really helpful in building my business was building up that portfolio. Um, but then for somebody who is, you know, looking to kind of take their design to that next level or, you know, just, just trying to design their website and, and they don't have the funds to hire somebody to do it professionally, this might be like an odd tip, but it's something I'm really passionate about. Um, my number one tip is to actually get off of Pinterest. 
Um, there are so many trends that come and go. And like a lot of times the first thing that I used to do when I was a, you know, first freshly out of college and new to design or that somebody who's, you know, building a website is going to Pinterest to find ideas for the website. But I've just found that that leads to a lot of unintentional copying um, and not being and clouding what your brand voice and um, what you like with kind of what's popular and kind of like the shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, developing what your brand or de design voice and colors and fonts and style is a combination of what is based on what you like, what your ideal client would like, um, and what is forward thinking in your field. Um, and so my best advice is just to be authentic. Um, trust me, you know, you're going to stand out from the crowd. But I, I get a lot of times I get, you know, links to websites that I've seen a thousand times. And, you know, it's, it's hard because everybody's like, well, she's doing it successfully. So I want mine to look just like hers. But I definitely think that there is power in being authentic and developing your own kind of voice and that that stands out more so than seeing the same kind of earthy tone color palette, you know, serif font combination that I've seen everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's yeah. It, it's so true though. <laughs> and it's same thing with everything social, you know, graphics yeah. that you create on social, the content that people create. It's like, how can you stand out from the noise? And that's, that's the yeah. biggest thing. So uh, you talked a little bit about WordPress, but do you have, and this can kind of touch on someone starting out, what's kind of the easiest platform to work with, but what is your favorite go-to platform to build a website on and why? So my baby is uh, called Show It, and I, I love uh, Show It because it is a no-code drag-and-drop website builder. So that is like, should be ringing in anybody's ears who are afraid to build a website. Yeah. Um, but it's very design-heavy and design-focused. So I know that that can um, be a little bit intimidating. But what I also love about Show It is that it integrates with WordPress. So you have the big badass wolf of WordPress behind your website. And so you can keep pumping out that content really, really well. Um, but for somebody new, I actually really love Squarespace. I used to not like them as much because it was so template-y, but lately they've been coming out with so many features that are just really, really cool and easy and it's just like so fast. Um, so I, and, and their SEO is, is pretty good as well. Um, and so you can optimize, you know, the same kind of things, image, alt tags, meta descriptions, page titles, you know, you can get to the nitty gritty with Squarespace as well. So I like, I like both of those for e-commerce Shopify. <laughs> yes. yes <laughs> love try. that. Maisie, thank you so much for everything that you've shared. It's been so helpful learning from you. And finally, we just love to ask this question on our marketing happy hour. What do you know now that you wish you knew in the beginning of your career? This was such a hard one when you like sent me this earlier because I was like, man, <laughs> like what did like I was, I mean, I, I really truly believe that like as a business owner, like there is no quick path to success. Like you just have to like get in there and go through it and and go through all the ups and downs to really become a seasoned successful entrepreneur or you know, so, or you know, director, if you're in a corporate position. Um, but I really wish that I reflected more on what I really wanted, what I defined as my own version of success, I guess you could say, um, because it's, it's super easy to be influenced by social media, by friends, by, you know, other entrepreneurs, um, who specifically, for example, need to make six figures to be happy per year and to be successful in your business. And I just wish that I reflected more on what I wanted and then intentionally and strategically built the business around the life that I wanted. Because at one point, my business was running me and, mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was just being, you know, and, and I, my eyes just had like dollar signs and I just kept saying yes and yes and yes, but it wasn't really the life that I wanted. Um, and so there are definitely some seasons where I want to 
push and work hard, but then there are other seasons where money isn't a motivating factor for me. I mentioned that I was pregnant earlier, and so this is my second child, um, but most recently my husband broke his ankle, um, and so he, it required, one, he couldn't walk for eight weeks, and so we have a young young toddler and I have a full-time business to run. And so it actually required me to take two complete weeks off of work, um, which, you know, if I had been in a season of my business where money was the motivating factor, it would have been heart wrenching, you know, but instead it was just like, okay, let's rearrange some timelines and, you know, communicate with clients that here's what's going on. Everybody is so nice, by the way. <laughs> Um, so, so gracious and giving and appreciative. And so, um, you know, so that was such a, a learning experience for me to have that happen unexpectedly, you know, just, just when an emergency like that happens, but yeah, I would just say, you know, really establishing why you're starting your business and what you want out of it, I think is super important and not looking at, you know, even what, like my best friend, she wants to make five figures a month and, and she like, she wants to kill it. And we joke because I'm like, well, I want to go on a walk with my baby at 3 p.m. <laughs> so, you know, and I think both are valid and both are beautiful. So, yeah. Yes. What would you love say is that. your guys' answers to that? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I think we did. What did we say? I think we did visit that question in our first ever episode yeah. of Marketing Happy Hour. And I think, I think my answer back then was, you know, it sounds like a procrastination tactic, but it's really, it can be done tomorrow. And it kind of goes along with what you were saying. Like, you know, you have to prioritize the things in your life that really matter. And uh, obviously anything that comes up in business or in work, it matters. But, you know, if it's really running you down or, or like hurting your personal self, health, life, whatever it is, um, it's not worth it. And you can do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. Mine is kind of similar to yours, Macy. It's especially with building kind of a marketing agency. And I don't even like to call it an agency because I know that comes with negative connotations towards it. Yeah. But when you think of marketing agency or anything of that kind, you think of this massive, massive company with mm -hmm. 45 employees, a million account managers and, and yeah. things like that. And I certainly who have friends who are on their way to building that. Um, but for me, I, I don't think like when I started my company, I really had a clear picture of what I wanted it to be. But I know for me, um, I got caught up in that comparison game of, oh my gosh, look at this person who is so successful. They have 10 employees. They're making a ton of money every month, um, driving nice cars. And it's like, you know, that's great. But behind the scenes, you don't know how much they're working and they may not have time for family, may not have time for extracurricular things that they want to do. And so it's just so important for me to st take a step back and realize, okay, what do I want out of this? What do I want out of my life? Like where do I need to spend my time that it's the most valuable? So when I get to age 85 or something, I can look back and say, I spent my time where yeah. I, I feel like I was okay with spending my time in and I didn't just work constantly and try to get that next dollar, like you said. So um, that's a big thing that took a minute, but it's something that was so eye-opening to me just to um, be intentional with um, the goals that I have for my business and just in life in general. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like there's like sometimes these preconceived notions of, you know, like even as a design agency, like, am I going to have multiple designers underneath me? And, you know, my personal heart is really lies within eight to 12 clients a year and that's it, you know? And so it's completely different than, you know, my sister who wants to build an agency and, you know, really serve clients well, but have multiple, you know, have, have 10 people um, under, under the payroll, but you know, it can happen in any, any industry too, like with photography and, you know, having multiple <laughs> shooters and, and all that kind of stuff to just, yeah. So I, I think that's super important. It might be like a cliche to be like, what is your why in your business? Yeah. But I do think <laughs> I would have saved a few, quite a few months <laughs> of stressing. Yeah. 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 And there's no, it's so funny because like, I feel like we've kind of ebbed and flowed in our culture, especially yeah. in the marketing and business space of, at one point it was like, okay, people who are hustling constantly are like heroes. And now we're kind of at the point where people are trying to decide, okay, is it the anti-hustle culture mm -hmm. we're going after? Yeah. Like, what is that? <laughs> but it's funny too, because like 
it's up to each individual to kind of define what they want their business and kind of career to look like. And if it is working, you know, 50 hours a week, and that's what you're comfortable with, you don't have a family, you know, you're single and you have the opportunity to do that and you're happy and you're stress, maybe not yeah. stress-free, but it's, it's not as stressful. Like that's totally fine too. So just really like you said, being intentional, looking at, okay, what is this causing on my life? Is it causing me stress? Is it causing me like yeah. pain within my family and just determining which direction to go with that? Yeah. So. My, um, yeah, last year we, we kind of had that decision and, and I think it's like, cool. Cause you don't have to make that decision, like stick with it too. Like you can change right. like, like this year, this is the year I'm conquering everything. And then like last year, my husband, he was working 70 hours a week as a, as a, um, uh, kind of second in command at a car dealership. Um, but then we, our daughter was just born and we found out that she was, um, deaf. And so she was, had high needs and we were going through the process of cochlear implants, which required at, at one point, at least one appointment a week, um, at the hospital and several tests and surgery at the end of the year. And so we made the decision to scale back our income 50% and have Blake come work from home and take care, you know, of Ava part-time while I worked. And, you know, it was just, it was, last year was an amazing season where we were in a difficult spot health-wise for our family, but we were able to take a step back. And then, you know, now he's kind of looking at, you know, his, his, his life right now. And he's like, all right, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to step back into it. So I think it's, I think it's cool of just, you know, imagining your business and, and your life as just different kinds of seasons and, and what your specific goals are, you know, with in those seasons and then, you know, bigger, broader, like five, 10 year goals. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. A amazing nugget to end on. And thank you so much. We'd love to allow people to, um, you know, get access to your channels and stuff and where to follow you, your career, your beautiful family. So can you tell all of us where we can follow you online? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm probably mainly on um, Instagram and that is Macy underscore Miller. And then my website is beboldesignstudio.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Macy. It was such a pleasure having you, you and we cannot wait for everyone to get their hands on this amazing knowledge. Okay. Wow. See, I told you that was a good one. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to learn from our incredible marketing happy hour conversations. If you enjoyed this episode, please remember to rate and leave a review. And as always, go check us out on Instagram at marketing happy hour. That's at marketing happy HR.